Hello and welcome to another edition of The Great Movie Show. I'm your host for today's episode. My name is Adam and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Lloyd and Dave. Is that coast host? Coast host? <laughs> what the hell's in this? I now live on the coast. Come out to the coast, we get together. Coast host. Podcast. Coast host. <laughs> Should we go again? Oh, Should we go again? No. Seven seconds in. <laughs> Leave it in, that was amazing. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Great Movie Show. I'm your host for today's episode, Adam. I'm joined today by my two co-hosts, Lloyd and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Never found your own names, so... Oh. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? Yeah, I'm good, Just how are you? Dandy, thank you. Uh, Predator is a 1987 American science fiction action film directed by John McTiernan. It's written by brothers Jim and John Thomas. It's, of course, the first installment in the Predator franchise. It stars Arnold Schwarzenegger as the lead of an elite paramilitary rescue team on a mission to save hostages in guerrilla-held territory in Central American rainforest. They encounter a deadly Predator, a technologically advanced monster who stalks and hunts them down. And that's it. That's the premise. And it makes a great film. Uh, the budget of the film was around $15 million. Uh, 20th Century Fox released it uh, in 1987 in the United States on June 12th. It grossed $98.3 million. Apparently, initial reviews were mixed, but the film has since been reappraised as a classic of the action genre. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Dave, uh, I'll start with you. Uh, you're a great fan of John McTiernan films. Um, only recently started watching... Uh, die Hard, uh, and yeah. rec recently, is it, you started watching uh, Predator for the first time? <laughs> well, recently, as in three months ago, when we were first supposed to be filming this episode, yeah, I watched it a few times, made some notes, and then obviously watched it again this time. Um, How come you never seen so it, Dave? How come it passed you by <laughs> back in the like late 80s? You're probably a bit maybe too young, I don't know, but early 90s, mid 90s? I don't know. Like we, it's the same conversation as Die Hard, isn't it? It's like, is it a conscious decision on my part to to avoid it? Probably not. Um, I wasn't as exposed to movies when I was that age as what you two were. I think for whatever reason, didn't go to the cinema very much. Although obviously you two never went to see this in the cinema. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. I just didn't watch it. Adam was and very then, tall, and I went on his shoulders. <laughs> and we wore like a long overcoat. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. One, I, please. I, I mean, clearly, I just reached out to grab the ticket and put my hand back in the overcoat. Like the ant hill mob. No, you know, and there clearly came a time when I was old enough to watch whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, and I still cho chose not to watch some of these classic 80s movies. I probably just felt like the moment had passed. Um, the, the, but obviously, the thing I remember, Dave, the thing I remember is. I think it was probably what about 89 90 that it was on terrestrial television so a couple of years after it was released um mm. in the cinema in the US and um terrestrial television I think it was ITV they'd show a film quite annoyingly they show a film from like 9 until 10 and then there'd be a break for the news until like 10:40 and then you were lucky you know if you're about 9 10 11 years old you might watch the first hour of the movie and then you would never see the second part because you wouldn't be able to stay up that late <laughs> And I remember this was one of the first films that I recorded on VHS, so I could watch the the sort of second half after the news. But because it was on from nine till ten back in the day, you couldn't have anything particularly violent or or, or what have you. So for years and years, I watched quite a pared down edited version. So there's like a famous scene where there's a reveal of the the, the skinned um, soldiers that we hear about at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, um, I, yeah, Hopper and his, his crew, and I'd never seen. I didn't even know, and you know, you had an idea of what Billy was looking at, and that he was turning away from shocked, but I didn't actually see that at all because they cut that out completely. So it was a bit of a shock when I actually saw it for the first time, the full film, when I was probably about seventeen or eighteen. I was like, oh, there's extra scenes in here that like didn't know about, and there's some other like bits six, bits six, six yeah, seven guys cool. is in the jungle having a good time. <laughs> Big explosion, end credits. Well, that was a lovely yeah, film. Yeah, it's only only four and a half minutes long, the, the, the version I saw. It's yeah. great. So um, in terms of the, the setup, um, there's a few things that I, I'd say I quite like about the movie. I like the fact that the sort of, it's, it's talked about as being science fiction and an action film, but there are definitely little sort of punctuated moments. So it starts off, doesn't it, with the opening 
um, moment where you see a spaceship and you see something jettison down. And then it immediately goes to the helicopters coming towards the sort of the jungle site to, to and it's very much army, soldiers, that kind of thing. There's no mention of an alien. No one knows anything about an alien. And so right. if you if you hadn't seen the very first thing and you'd watch this sort of with, with no intro whatsoever, you'd think you were just watching a standard kind of army type film or like, you know, a Rambo type film, wouldn't you? Well, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't, you think, think it... don't you think that, that scene at the start was just kind of shoehorned in just to give yeah, you some I did, kind of I didn't like it. context? I, and I'd forgotten about it to a certain degree. And when I watched it... Just... it Recently, it's just, yeah, they it just was... they would have watched it, wouldn't they? They would have put a test screen on, and the audience would have gone, "Well, why is he? Why? Why is an alien here?" Well, that's the best but thing. Also, you, don't, you don't need to know, do you? you no, don't you don't. Need to know. Yeah, but 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 that's you what know, I think. The, um, maybe maybe I've been watching it more closely because because it's for this, and because I'm not as familiar with it anyway. But the female character whose name escapes me, the the, the South American girl, Anna, Anna, Anna. Doesn't she say something about like that? From yeah. when she was a little girl, people only in the, in, the in the hottest in the hottest years. Men so go suggest... in the jungle. That sort of. So thing. it's a suggestion that the predator's been around for a long time, hunting humans, or was it well, a crash landing? Was it? A, was no, it... no, no. In that area, it's the suggestion is he comes in the hot seasons, and it's a hot. You know, everyone's sweating that year, so it's evidently hot. But uh, I, I don't, I don't like the start. That little bit. Of the, I don't think you need it. I, no. You know the the special effects isn't amazing. It's good, but it's you know you, you don't you don't need that bit in space. You could have just started with a boom. You know the diddle little and diddle little and the helicopter yeah. coming in. The guys getting off the chopper. The shortest jeep ride ever through. Yeah, yeah, just walk sea, it. Just walk bit, it. So get off the helicopter get and walk over a little stream. <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't exactly. know how, how how safe is it smoking cigars on helicopters as well? Because he gets off to the army. Isn't that one passes. of the um, isn't that one of the um, the trivia things about Predator that he actually wasn't allowed to do that? But they, I think oh, it wasn't know. a real cigar or something. Um, I yeah, I never had a fake cigar. I, I, the, the intro, apart from apart from the the little bit where the jettisoning space spacecraft, the the intro is brilliant, I think. Yeah. And I think the problem with having that little spaceship bit right at the beginning is, as you kind of say, Lloyd, it kind of changes the whole mood of the the. The film it's not building to anything and then changing changing direction I, I think it's a weird comparison maybe but um from dust till dawn you've got two yeah. completely different movies yeah. you've got a movie that's like a like a, a buddy bad guy fleeing the police kind of movie and then from nowhere you know unless obviously you know what you, you you're buying into if you watch from dust till dawn all of a sudden what's this what's this going on with vampires you know I, I don't know where this is coming from. And I think that if they didn't have that little intro for Predator, it'd be kind Welcome of the same to thing. hell. Exactly. No, I, I already been married. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a disappointment. And um, other than that, the, the intro is really, really good. And obviously Sylvester's um, mm -hmm. the music's awesome in terms of the way it builds uh, the emotion and, uh, gets you ready for what looks like your good old fashioned 1980s muscle bound action film. Exactly. I think that's, I think it's a good sort of like gateway film to horror in a certain degree. Cause if you look at this, the four, the, the, the basics of it, it, it's a horror, isn't it? There's an alien going around skinning people. It's firing projectiles that are blasting out people's stomachs. It's in the sort of vein of, you know, the sort of uh, gore and damage this alien can do like alien Ridley Scott's alien. But like, I, I didn't like horrors growing up and the sort of tone of them that scare me, afraid of the dark. Or like, I'm talking like sort of six, seven, eight, when I was, what, I was probably eight when this film came out. And I remember it coming on terrestrial television. And I, I wasn't going to watch it. But then the first little bit of the film brought me into it. And it's an action. It's, you know, it's Arnie. Dude, I've seen Commando. I know Arnie. And it, it allowed me to watch this, what would be technically a horror but it, it's brought it into more... It was a new genre, What the genre, wasn't it? It wasn't horror. It was sci-fi action sort of thing, yeah. as opposed to just a horror movie. Like Alien, Ridley Scott's Alien, that was sci-fi horror, per se. But then this yeah, has but... brought this gung-ho, guns, the usual like buddy alien. movie. 
Isn't that what Aliens is? Thinking about it, I never drew the parallel. But exactly, aliens, yeah. Are... James Cameron's Alien. Yeah, aliens. James Cameron's Aliens. Aliens, aliens is an yeah. action is, is sci-fi action. horror movie. Sci-fi, whereas, whereas sci-fi horror was really Scott's first Alien. Yeah. yeah. And so, like this... So Predator came out a year after Aliens. Isn't there a chance that it was rushed through production on the back of Aliens being made? No, because the script had been along, around for a while and they'd been getting people on board. Um, yeah, but... I, but it, the, did you know the original the original script written, written by these two brothers was basically just the genesis of the idea? It was rewritten by David yeah. Fancher, is it? That wrote yeah. or David Peoples, the guy that wrote Blade Runner, basically. Oh, Peoples, David Peoples, yeah. He was brought on board to rewrite it. I think they need to take some time off filming for Arnie to get married or something. And I, well, I, I saw an interview. I saw an interview with Arnie as well, where he said that. When he first read the script, it was just about him versus the predator. It was just one man versus one alien. It was his yeah. idea to make it into more of a kind of um, ensemble piece, and you know, have the whole kind of the the army squad. And, yeah, you know. Arnie said he'd always wanted to make his um, Seven Samurai, the Magnificent Seven, yeah. type of movie. Right. And the lofty, thing was seven... lofty, lofty aspirations there, Arnie. But I, but I think there were there was were the seven in this. So you got Dutch, yeah. Dylan. Yeah. Blaine, Billy, Mac, Poncho, and Hawkins. 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 So yes, seven. Yes. So we've got yeah. seven. Have you but they also took. Or? They also talk about, don't they? That um, like you know, it started as a, 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 a the original idea was just something like a Rambo's for everybody other than ET or something. Whether that's true or not, um, that apparently inspired the sort of initial writing of the story. But like you say, Lloyd. The, the the idea manifested and, and Arnie seems to have been quite involved in the development of the concept. And yeah. he also wanted to have people who were like massive, massively yeah. muscular people, not people who necessarily would be associated with being Marines or soldiers, um, you know, like too heavy, too big for that. But he wanted actually to, to have those kind of huge guys um, doing the film because he thought somehow that it would – Add more gravitas to it. it, it yeah, the time. Yeah. You say about the size. Obviously, it could be soldiers. Jesse Ventura, ex Navy Seal, wasn't he? True, and uh, actually, um, Punch Richard Chase, wasn't he? Actually, well, he, he was. He'd been in Vietnam. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he'd been a soldier in Vietnam, and he, yeah. So he's like the only person that I would have said when you watch it. You kind of, if you're really honest with yourself, you'd think would have been able to, to 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 go through the jungle and do that sort of stuff you know arnie's ridiculously <laughs> big but then it's that vehicle isn't it it's that's what it's about the the, the opening scene the the uh mid-air arm wrestle that he has with carl weathers as dylan you know yeah, that is the emotional. kind of the epitome of you know 1980s muscle bound kind of like you know one-upmanship isn't it it's the most manly handshake of all time. It turned me on a little bit. All those muscles rippling. Dylan, you son of a bitch. Still pushing pencils, I see. <laughs> Go easy on me, Dutch. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's great. It's but yeah, but, but that, but that whole thing, and I, I don't know whether the you know the rumours about some of the things that occurred on set, whether that's to fuel that kind of issue. But, you know, you hear things about Jesse Ventura having this real issue of whether his his uh, biceps are as big as Arnie's. And Arnie told the, the cast, you know, the rest of the crew to say that Jesse Ventura's were bigger than his. And he was like, go around explaining, like, you know, boasting. And then suddenly it was like, Arnie did the big reveal. And oh, actually mine are a lot bigger than yours. Um, and apparently they were getting up really early to go to the gym before each like filming session and they're getting earlier and earlier and some people like getting up at four in the morning so they could be in the gym for like an extra 20 minutes so if that's true you can see that everything on set in terms of you know these guys it was all about kind of competing with each other to to look the best and to sort of be the biggest guy out there and the strongest guy out there yeah, they do, they, they try and turn up for take. This is from Carl Weathers' account of it. They try and take up, turn up for takes or pumped, but then try and make out they hadn't worked out. So it's like, this is just my natural physique. I haven't just yeah, pumped to exertion. So Carl Weathers is going to the gym. Yeah, exactly. You turn up, you just the uh, Athenian 
godly body you've got. You know, you haven't been pumping. But Cole, when's you go to the gym, there'll be other people in there. They'll be like, <laughs> right, I'll, uh, Sorry, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? So for anyone listening on the podcast, Dave's just demonstrated his uh, muscles. <laughs> no one noticed. It's okay. <laughs> Carry on. Move along. So let, let's just uh, think about the, the story for a, a bit. So the opening scene, very quickly, what, within about three or four minutes, you get told that this is a crack team. They've worked together. They've got a, a really tight unit. They might be, you know, guns for hire. They've got an army connection, maybe. And they've been hired to go into the jungle to, to effectively rescue somebody. But there's a CIA angle. You're not quite sure what it is. You see a little look from Richard Armstrong, the general, at um, Carl Weathers, uh, and and back again. So you know that there's a bit more that they're not explaining. You know, we, I think Arnie says, you know, we're not assassins or, or something along those lines. So you know there's something more to it. But then it cuts to I think uh, little Richard singing, and they're on the helicopter, and you're into the film. You're straight into it, and I think that's the mark of a good action film to me of how quickly paced you get into the movie you know you see now loads of action movies that the main way that they they present is there's a big action se sequence right at the beginning that you might not even know what the reason is for that action sequence and then it's cue titles then then it it dies down for a bit and then there's another action sequence whereas this they they start with the intro but the powerful music is is sort of taking you into the film and you get a little bit of information and then that's it. We're in the jungle. Good to go. Yeah, straight in. So I think that's one of the things I really like. And and the characters, mm. you know, I'm not saying that, you know, every single person's Oscar worthy in their performance, but the characters are quite well defined from, from right at yeah. the start. You know, they, just all, on they all play their part, don't they? <laughs> yeah, and just yeah. on board that helicopter, you've got Blaine that's chewing the uh, the chewing tobacco and he, you know, spits and it lands on the Carl Weather's boot. And straight away, you can see the animosity. They don't like the fact that Carl Weathers' character, Dylan, is is even there with them. That's not how they operate. And and then there's the issue, isn't it, with Hawkins, where he you know he catches the the thing that's thrown at him from Pond, whilst he's reading something. So you know, like that everybody's got their role, but you know they all know what they're doing. So you know, you mentioned the uh, the music, Alan Silvestri. Yes. Yeah. Um, what year was Back to the Future? Eighty five. That's right. yeah, power of love as well. And obviously, obviously, this is a relatively new movie to me. So you know, there's, you watch that over and over again. Music is just the music, but there's a lot of like thematic similarities in the music between Predator and Back to the Future. Very similar. You know the bit. You know uh, where where Doc's like on, on the clock tower trying to connect up the cable as Marty's sitting in the DeLorean and the little alarm clock goes off and he yeah. lashes his head. And like dots going, damn, 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 that bit. There's lots of little stabs and kind of the uh, kind of. I just thought I was. I, it was the Back to the Future theme when I was when I was listening to it. Really similar. And also, um, like the the bit in the jungle where the kind of it's like the A Team style. You know, I love it when a plan comes together. The kind of preparing for the for the kind of. Uh, Predator camp for the, for the predators' eventual kind of attack. Yeah. 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 There's the music in that was really similar to, to the Hateful Eight and um, Quentin Tarantino, the opening sequence to that, Ennio Morricone. Um now you'd have to go watch it and try rather than take my word for it or potentially play a section of each on this actual podcast YouTube show. The thing is Morricone was around then, so there's it's probably mm -hmm. there's there's potential references to Sylvester at the time, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I just really picked up on on, on that when I was watching it. Um, and you know, um, you mentioned Long Tall Sally in the helicopter yep. at the start. I mean, you're probably aware of this. I I, I was only really paying attention to this scene um, when I watched it earlier on today, um, when uh, it's a character called Mac. Yep. Yeah, Bill Duke. The guy with, yeah, the guy who's like. Got the bick, but he's kind of. Is there, is, is, is there an actor called Arnie? Is there a character called Mac? Hey, is there a thing an hey, actor called hey, Bill hey, Duke? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Well, that that scene where he's kind of he's lost he's lost the plot a bit, hasn't he? As he's go, as he's kind of going to to attack the predator, and he's kind of muttering to himself. He's muttering the lyrics of Long Tall Sally. Well, yeah, yeah, because yeah, he's yeah he's lost his friend. He's lost his friend. Like they've been, you know, they come out of yeah. scrapes with not a scratch. Yeah. Not a scratch. But that's that's great. That that's like it's almost like you know like a the dramatic equivalent of the return joke. You know, like the comedians, they stand up comedians, they do they they say a joke and then six six or seven minutes later they say something again that reminds the 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 viewer of the the previous joke. It's yeah. it's really good that because it shows how unhinged he is because it's almost like the last, the last thing that, gonna, yeah the last thing that got into fun. his head. Gonna have me um, some fun. And he com- and he has he's completely lost it and. um I think you know we we fast forwarded a fair bit because we've gone from you know the guys jumping out the helicopter to um, you know I, I like the bit in uh, in the helicopter where where Dylan says you know you never knew how you never know how much I miss this <laughs> and Dutch just looks at him and goes you never were that smart <laughs> <laughs> because like you know who enjoys jumping out of a helicopter um, yeah. but but when they land you know it's still focused it's nothing to do with the alien at all it's it's still to do with the rescue mission and even when they they take on those gorillas um at that particular camp brilliant it, set piece as well that was like real hook then wasn't it yeah the movie. absolutely and and uh, apparently uh, one of my one of my favorite lines from arnie was actually ad libbed the uh, when he throws the large knife oh, at the Stick around. Stick around. Stick around. But also, apparently, it was quite cumbersome and you know, like ridiculously large. And Arnie didn't like it, so they were quite glad that they just left it in the person in the tree, and not not in real life, but uh, to discard it for the rest of the movie. Um, and then, and then you get the sort of the the twist slightly that you know, Carl Weathers explains that you know this this was all about information. It was about getting the information for the CIA. And they return to the idea. Look, 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 look here, Dylan. Look what I found. Look what I found. You set us up. <laughs> Absolutely, it's more than more than they ever thought they were going to get. And um, uh, and then they talk about Hopper again. He sort of reminds you of the fact that Hopper's yeah. team was in there and something happened to them. Um, and it's only after that where they're kind of making their arrangement to be picked up, having effectively successfully completed their mission, that it turns into the second film. And in fact, you could say it's like a the 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 rest of the film you could break up into to more components as well because you've got the the bit where they're hunted because it was actually wasn't it called the hunter under the original yeah, that was title, the and, title yeah or the title yeah. of the script yeah um and you know I I think the most enjoyable part of the movie and it's often the case isn't it in relation to a lot of things like in Independence Day before you see the alien it's probably better because of that yeah. intrigue it's what you set up in your mind. Ridley Scott's um, Alien, you know, you absolutely you've got, you, you've got all the, the 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 prelude to it, but then there's a good payoff when you see that alien as well. It's always yeah. it's good not seeing the alien. It's good for suspense, and it's you know, and it's always lets you down. We talked about Jaws, didn't we? It's like when you start seeing the shark, it's like for God's sake. But in this film, it's kind of just like Alien, isn't it? In Aliens, yeah. when you actually see the being, the creature. It's not too bad. It's not too shabby, is it? It's pretty, pretty damn good. You know, like American still, Wealth in London. It's not up. too bad. I think. The yeah, and I think up pretty well. Yeah, and yeah, and the, but also it's it's sometimes with those sorts of films, you know, Aliens. There's a lot of crossover with Aliens. Obviously, they even, you know, have sequels that were were written because of the success of Predator. You know, the crossover with Alien and Predator. Um, but one of the simplest concepts in aliens is the the you know the geolocator to show how close the the aliens yeah. are and it's just a simple beep isn't it and it's getting faster and faster depending on how close they are exactly you know i can't see them again yeah and oh, and no. the, the the fact you know they're in the, yeah exactly they're in the, we know how close the wall is they're they're within the wall how is that um game over man game over <laughs> oh rest in peace um oh bless you Often when there's films where people are being chased, you don't really see the the thing that's chasing them for a while. You know, the, the, there might be that kind of intrigue about what they might look like. But in Predator, you've got the added thing as well. It's, you don't see it, but you then see what it yeah. sees. So you see it in a lot of movies now, you know, like really bad B movies, don't you, where it's no, but- the view from the snake, what, what the snake sees yeah. as it's going through the, 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 the undergrowth. Remember they did it? 
Do you remember they did in Alien 3? The view from the alien. When it was following Inside. the people running around. Yeah. Yeah. But because because it was it's effectively invisible, isn't it? Um the predator. Um yeah cloaking or whatever you want to call it but because of that it, it gives a bit more scope or a bit more of an excuse for you know like well let's have a play with what it sees and how it sees and the infrared thing was was just inspired really to yeah, to, cool. to, to say this is this is how we uh we deal with it and um it makes it quite creepy as well doesn't it you're seeing it and it's like oh right how was it seeing and you've got the whenever you've got the predator view you've got the overarching music yeah. haven't you and it's it does give this slightly different thing to it. Again, I think it would have been better if they hadn't had the first thing of this spaceship and the yeah. the pod jettisoning because you're thinking, you're going, well, what's that? Is it a sniper with an infrared scope? What, what's going mm. on? Until you actually starts to unravel the whole plot. But it's like even with the, you know, the processing where you hear the... <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, okay. Right, okay. Right. And, then you, and then you hear like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And he's like, yeah. ah, 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 ah. and it's like you can hear, you can like sense the way the the aliens trying to process and mimic and copy and develop. So you're saying like this is this is quite an intelligent thing that it's not just a hunter in the sense that it's it's chasing after them, but there's there's more to this. It's quite an intelligent creature that we're dealing with here. Well, yeah, it's hunting the most dangerous species on Earth. It, it's a hunter, isn't it? So it yep. it's almost like it knows. You know, like you think of duck calls or turkey calls for hunters to hunt animals. And that this has been around all the planets. So for humans, it realizes that the call for a human is another human. So it's recording these ooh, ooh. things Wait like Home Alone, two, Home Alone 2 style and then playing them back so they can draw the, the humans in. Sorry, Dave. I'm intrigued. Now. Oh, Wait right. a second. What's this bombshell? Roll, roll it back. Right. So this species, one of them... <laughs> happens to be happens to have landed on earth potentially yeah. accidentally no no and purposely first... no, purposely 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 and has yeah. it been there since since this the this the character that i mentioned earlier was a little girl has it been has it been no. around for years the, 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 they come and visit they'll do a bit of hunting right. and then they'll right. go again it's just like hunters right. in in yeah you know on normal earth yeah. they go in do the little thing get the trophies and go and these are trophy hunters the predators so they come in do their bits right. and bobs and then go. Yeah. Um, well, uh, uh, an not so lucky. Well, interesting question. Have you seen Predator Two, Dave? Uh, I started watching it. Yeah. In fact, I meant to say earlier on, in terms of when you asked me why I'd never watched Predator, I actually watched Aliens versus Alien versus Predator in the cinema about fifteen years before I watched any Predator movie. I think I, well, I think I was there with you, Dave. I think I watched it with you. Yeah. Well, there you go. And obviously, you know, you can. Predator is something that's in the public consciousness. I know the character, you know, I know. I just never seen the actual movie. It was like I felt like probably I didn't need to watch it. I know, I know him very well. I've seen him is. on Parky and uh, Jonathan <laughs> Ross. I know him really, really well, but I just never seen his film. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, he was I that, he's a Jamaican fella because he has he's got dreadlocks, doesn't he? Well, that was in as well. Yeah, that's what Stan Winston did. He he sketched him like that and made him like that. And it what, was uh, James, the... James Cameron that, that suggested the, the mandibles, was it? Yes, it was, yeah. On yeah. a plane to Japan yeah. with Stan Winston. Yeah, yeah, not a Predator fan. Well, <laughs> apparently in... Um, there's there's a moment... Well, I, this is obviously this is true. In Predator 2, there's a moment where you see some of the schools of um, the things that the Predators killed before. And in the first film, you just see human schools. And in um, Predator 2, you actually do see the remnants of an alien, as in from yeah, aliens. Yeah, yeah, it's and, xenomorph, xenomorph from alien, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And Because you see, that's on the ship, isn't it? Like, So you only see the human skulls in Predator 1 because yeah. you've only seen what he's collected so far, but yeah. you see kind of some of their best trophies on the ship. But apparently we, that that was the thing that inspired the crossover and actually the comics and, and the like were written as a result of that. I don't know if that's true. I thought, um, it, I thought it preceded that, and I think it was just Lee Streg. Thought an Easter egg they put in Predator Two. Well, it, it it seems like an amazing leap, doesn't it? That somebody saw a um, a skull of a xenomorph and said, "Oh, well, what if these guys battled?" But it makes it's... kind of perfect sense, doesn't it? If you've got a yeah, if you've got something like a hunter, like the predator, and you've then got effectively the the one of the best killing machines that doesn't fear or think of anything. The the skulls you see, so so the spaceship in Predator Two with the skulls. 
and then you see the other predators at the end, don't you? Feeds back into the original script from the Thomas brothers. Thomas brothers, yeah. is that what? Um, who basically had a brethren of hunters, alien hunters yeah. coming down. Mm. And then they, as the script went round and round and almost came back to the start, they just changed it for one single hunter coming down. And then Predator 2 just yeah. gives a nod for that and also builds on the universe as well. Of You've got this planet or species that just hunt the most dangerous animals in the well, beings in the universe. That, that's where I think they went wrong with the Predator because they all of a sudden decided, as they often do in these things, and they, they you know, if you think about Jurassic World, they actually joke about how this is a concept of we're not happy with the existing bad guy. We've got to make a bigger, badder yeah. version with like, you know, bigger teeth or whatever the phrase is. And they do that with in the Predator. They they make a, you know, like a, a predator a hunter that's twice as big as your standard yeah. scary predator. And it makes no sense. No, considering Shane Black was, you know, was the main orchestrator behind that storyline, I believe, and, and it's also script. Um, it just didn't make enough sense. And then uh, it was almost an excuse for, I was so excited hearing that Shane Black was on board. I thought, mm. great, you know, lethal weapons, spot on, happy days. And then it was just, yeah, you had the buddy element, which was quite good. It hit the mark some places and some places it missed very wide. But just, yeah, the plot to it, it's like, come on, we could have done something better here. Anyway, so um, in the movie, <laughs> who is the who is the first of the um, crack team of commandos that is killed by the Predator? Shane Black. I knew, I knew you were going to ask this. I knew it was just going to be Die Hard Part 2. <laughs> and I, and it, I knew I should have... I, I, I was going to pay attention to it and make a note of it. Shane, Shane what does, Black. What does Shane Black say immediately before he's killed? Um, where, where, where are you going? Where are you running to? There's no way. I think to he run says to. we're not. We're, oh, I'm not going to hurt you, yeah, or something exactly. similar to, to that. Um, and because she hasn't got a gun and he has, the predator sees that as an unfair advantage, and so immediately um, attacks Shane Black's character. What, what's great about that is you see the trail of something, you know, the blood and and what have you. And um, it focuses on Arnie's character, Dutch. And he says, you know, have you seen, have you found Hawkins? And he says, I'm not sure. Or something, I can't tell. And then, like, you see Arnie's eyes kind of go like, oh, okay, this isn't usual. Um, and then you, you get to know at that point that there's something more, it's much more than a person. It's much more than... Um, somebody who is just like you know what was it uh, dylan's character says you know oh it's just good it's just one rogue guy it's just one man yeah. in the jungle yeah it's one of the gorillas, like, no. isn't it? yeah and it's like no this is something different and then um do you remember dave who the second character is to to die um no so that's blaine isn't it um blaine gets shot and you see his like his rib cage open up and that's the the really cool scene where Bill Duke then grabs the minigun and then basically fires off as, as many bullets and as, yeah. as much carnage in about 30 seconds as you possibly can. And then everyone comes down and rather than say, why is that guy doing this or what we're doing? Everybody fires at the jungle in the same direction just to clear. And they, they must yeah. shoot about 200 meters worth of undergrowth. And then, you know, they make the big point of saying that we didn't hit a thing. We didn't hit anything that just shouldn't happen there's something different going on here and i think that that moves it through to almost like this you know the third or fourth stage of the film and then you've got the next stage of the film where they start setting traps but those traps are standard army issue things and so the predator then sees those things and they don't they actually don't explain that fully until predator 2 that it's got different visions it's got it's not just um able to see infrared it's also got other filters and stuff so it'd yeah, be able U to see uv like... and stuff like that and standard yeah like so when you go to spec savers and they put the big the big thing in front of you and they, they go they go uh can you see the red better or can you see the green better <laughs> yeah. Like <that. laughs> yeah exactly exactly the predator had been to spec savers yeah in fact that'd probably be a very good ad, uh, advert for them <laughs> yeah we're well, yeah. using all sorts of like <laughs> ips and all these different adverts oh, these days. Stumbling around in the dark. It's covered in mud, I can't see him. 
I was, I was going to say, Adam, when uh, when um, Shane Black's character, when uh, Hawkins is killed, his his mum went to see Predator and she watched it and he'd warned her about the jokes and she sat through all the jokes. She said that didn't bother her, but she walked out just before he was killed because she didn't want to see her son get killed on screen. But she, really? sat, through all, she sat through all the really inappropriate yeah, jokes. I I'm find that quite funny, actually. Um, apparently, um, Shea Black was really annoyed because he wanted to wear what he would consider to be like, you know, like marine issued glasses. But John McTiernan said, No, I want to have like the goofiest, geekiest looking glasses. So you definitely look like a bookworm, that you look like um, a geek. And uh, he, he wasn't too happy about that. But I think it works quite well. Do you think he was getting punished a little bit? Because it was basically, he was on the acting crew. And they gave it to him because he thought, because at first it was like, can you do a rewrite? So I want to act. It's like, well, I'm going to give you a part in, in, in the film anyway. You know, and then McTinnan's thinking, he'll do rewrites of a night. He'll rewrite the script for us. Because it had gone from the Thomases all the way around through a load of rubbish here and there. And they pretty much got back to the original script. And they're like, right, what are we going to do with this? And so they were kind of wanted to rewrite it on the hoof. So Shane Black would be there. Yeah, do rewrites in the evening. And he just he just wanted to act. So I don't know if it's punishment that they made him a bit of the goofy soldier and then was the first to kill him off as well. It's like, right, take that, mate. You should have, written, you should have rewritten the script. Why have I not seen him credited anywhere with rewriting? He didn't do he it. Just... He, wanted, he just wanted to act. All right. So what, what was his involvement with the script then? They wanted him to rewrite it. They wanted him to do rewrites while he was there shooting. So McTiernan took him down anyway, but he just yeah. said, no, I want to act. So he didn't, he wasn't doing the rewrites. Oh, right. And so they, I think they might've killed him first or out of order just to get, to oh, steer him okay. over. Okay. So when I was, no when bullshit. I, obviously, <laughs> one of the things I was most surprised about Predator was when I realized that it was Rusty Griswold playing, playing the character of the Predator. Anthony Michael Hall. He just doesn't look at tall enough to, to play, play a character like the Predator. Yeah. Dave, is that what number on your joke list is that? <laughs> um, 17. We've, we've gone out of order slightly. We've been jumping around. Like he'd just come from, he'd just done Harry and the Hendersons, hadn't he? Oh, yeah. don't start this. <laughs> What? So obviously, obviously, to clarify, the the character, the, the actor that played Predator was was called Kevin Peter Hall. Yeah, who yeah. just done Harry? You might see explaining your joke now. No, it's yeah. not a joke. And, and, <laughs> and Kevin Peter, no, no, Kevin Peter Hall, Hall had played Harry in the uh, yeah, Harry. He was in, in Harry and the Hendersons as Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah, uh, and obviously, Jean Claude Van Damme was originally was originally hired to play the title role of the Predator, but he was. I, he was firstly too small compared to all of the, the huge men in the cast, and he looked a bit silly. And also, obviously, rumour has it, he, his ego got the better of him when he realised he had to run around the jungle in a in a red lizard suit, which is yeah. what the character looked like at that point before a major redesign by Stan Winston. The, the problem the problem is, though, Dave, that if he had been in it, he the Predator would have been able to do the splits. No problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> no, I like that. I like yeah. the story that the Jean, that if it's true that Jean Claude Van Damme went, this is rubbish. I'm not doing this. Someone else is going to do it. And they went, excellent. We'll go for someone who actually fits the bill. Here's an Easter egg I noticed. I didn't. I didn't read this. I noticed it when I was watching Predators um, with Brody as the as the lead. One of the creatures that's chasing them quite early on is the original Predator concept. So there's a bit where what's the guy called? Well, he, was in, well. he was in that '70s well. show when he played the dentist or the, the mad doctor in Predators. What's he called? He was in Spider-Man Three. Played Eddie Hall or Eddie? Is it all Eddie Hall? Toby Maguire. No, he played Spider-Man. What's he called from that '70s show? The main guy in that. Um. Don't watch it. He was Venom in Spider-Man 3. He was in Predators. No, I, no, I know exactly who you mean, but I've just Dane got Dane DeHaan? No. Dane, Dane DeHaan? No. No. Um, I, I, Topher, um, Topher, Topher Grace. Topher Grace. Topher Grace. Yeah. So he's in there. He's about to get... And then 
I think it's Brody, Adrian Brody's trailing with the sniper rifle and takes out this thing, and that's the original Predator concept from, right from, from Predator. And it looks a bit naff, and I can see why they didn't want to do it. He came down, McTiernan was looking at it, and they were like going, this ain't going to work. And McTiernan just went, sent it back saying, are we going to use this? And the studio went, eh, no, it's fine. There are some, uh, there are some, some, some rare photos floating around the internet. We should really probably put one up on screen so people can see. Yeah, this I've red, seen one of Van Damme. Red, in red, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the red yeah, bit they were using the red was for any um, camouflage scenes, wasn't it? Well, because it had to be the opposite of green, basically, and not yeah. blue because of the sky, not green and not blue. Trees so that was yeah. So that was for a camouflage. If they wanted it to be invisible, yeah. they'd have it yeah. in the red suit, and then obviously the actual creature itself was just. Was just normal uh, colours. I heard, well, I didn't hear. I think I read once that when the original Stan Winston uh, costume, no. I don't know if this is true, and I can't remember what source I got it from. That they uh, they had it small to start with, and they put it on a monkey, <laughs> let the monkey <laughs> climb the trees, <laughs> but then it yeah. just didn't look quite right or very menacing because there's this little thing going, yeah. <laughs> basically acting like Ben in the tree. And oh, so they yeah, tried yeah, to do that. You know, I. I read the Did no, I read the same thing. He said, the predator. I read the, I read yeah. the same thing. Apparently, John McTiernan said like he, you know, he got his monkey, but then he went up in the tree and he cowered and he didn't do what monkeys do, and he basically just sat there in the corner going, "No, I'm not doing anything." Is it true so then? Is it, like, was that was that the original predator suit or the predator we know, the Stan Winston predator? Well, the, the no, the Stan the Stan That's Winston so predator story, suits apparently. <laughs> So the, the Sam Winston predator suits apparently like you know two hundred pounds and like was colossal to wear even for somebody like Kevin Peter Hall. They had to have like some sort of bungee attached to it. No, to I wasn't saying they put monkey it. in that one. I mean they had like a miniature one. Because <laughs> that'd just be mean. <laughs> that'd just be horrendous. Um, even the even the tree that Kevin Peter Hall standing on apparently had to be made of concrete because it wouldn't have taken the the actual tree wouldn't have taken the kind of weight that you know like on the branch that he was standing on because it was so heavy. Um, I think one of the interesting things about the the big reveal, if you see what I mean, is that it's it's kind of a slow reveal, isn't it? Because you get that point where it's um, he's camouflaged, and then you see like you see the green eyes, and you see a slight outline, and then you see that kind of crackly image where it's like his camouflage isn't working for a second, so you see it, and then it disappears. But you don't actually see the the face of. Um, the yeah, predator it's until, the mask, hasn't it? Yeah, because Carl Weathers yeah. sees it at one point. It's basically just hanging around the side of a tree, and it's just yeah, with the mask on. But he does see the full yeah. thing, and then he's like, "What the?" But that, but that's another thing. That's why I was saying I think the film's brilliant because of so many layers. Because you get to the point when it's hunted, like all of the other characters, it's killed like Dylan, it's killed Mac, and you're left with basically just him against Arnie, and he decides actually it's more sport it's more of a, an appropriate fair matchup if it's just me un, un, unassisted by all my technology but, against but Arnie. at the end he does at first he well when it's just him and army he's quite happy to like fire his laser cannon at him a few times have yeah, a few shots. it's only when he's like pretty much right there he starts taking off his bits and pieces doesn't he, he goes right come on arnie and arnie's still tricking him but I like that. Talk about the weapons. If 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 you want to, oh, we can talk about it at the end. Sorry to cut you off mid fly. No, no, that, it's 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 fine. I mean, I think I I wanted to talk for just a moment about you know when they they make the the sort of makeshift um, the makeshift weapons. So they're using all like the the reeds and the vines and mm. um, the nets out of like parts of the tree and the plants. I quite like that as a as, as a concept because it was it's kind of like using the same sort of tactics that the predator's using. So he's using the camouflage, the technological camouflage, but they then decide to start using the camouflage, the natural camouflage of the jungle. And it yeah. it's the first moment in the film where you feel there's like a, a slight shift in the balance back to they kind yeah, of appreciate. Yeah, exactly, yeah, he, and and it works, comes, you know, in a limited yeah. way. Because he says that like, he came in over the wires, you know, when they've settled the claymores and things like that. Yeah. So like, they know something's going on. And then they first get him, don't they, where Arnie does his favourite, well, it was cover of the DVD for a long time. He does his steps out, doesn't he, with his gun slowly. 
And then, yeah. unbeknownst to him, the Predator's right next to him, but we don't see it. We don't even see the camouflage. It's just nothing shown. Yeah. And the net, just about two foot away from Arnie, pops up all of a sudden. And the yeah. Predator's shooting his way out of it because he hasn't seen it. But he's. I wonder what he'd done. He was just probably sneaking up, wasn't he? Stealthing Arnie and just, like, luckily he had the net there. But, yeah, so they, they realise that's going to start working now and they start formulating their plan. What I've always liked about it, again, you know, I sort of say this, I temper it a few times. I'm not suggesting this is an Oscar-worthy film or anything like that, but the pacing you know of it, it, I would disagree with that. I think it's it's hit all of its objectives for what it wanted to be, very, very well. Even with the acting levels, everyone did what they were supposed to do. And John McTiernan, you'll like this, Adam. You know, we talk about popcorn rating. A film yeah. might be not be a classic. It might not be Oscar-worthy, but you can. See, you know, it's a popcorn movie. You can sit there and just enjoy it for what it is yeah. and really enjoy it every single second of it. It doesn't matter that it's not going to be like bloody gain awards or anything. And John McTiernan said when he got the Predator script, he was like, I love it. Got Arnie on board. I want to make a popcorn movie. He used those words. Perfect. And we, we've, we haven't, I never knew that before I read it recently, and you've not known that. And we, no, he's no, used the know. same phrase as that, that. That's what it is. It's a popcorn movie. That's quite cool. Isn't and it? it is. And, and, and I think that the, the best popcorn movies have that pacing. They've got something that keeps, keeps you interested. There might be little lulls, but they keep you going. Yeah. And Big Trouble in Little China, John Carpenter. Absolutely. Brilliant. And you go in like that. Yeah, and there's you know like there's little chase, and then something happens, then another little chase, and then you know in this one, you know the the whole um, and and apparently it's one of uh, Arnie's favorite lines from any movie. You know, get to the chopper, get to the chopper, right? <laughs> when he says that, when he says it, it's like literally the moment he says that, it changes from he's hunting everybody to it's one on one, it's Arnie again, it's now me against the alien, and. You know, even down to you know the amazing um, jumping off the uh, the waterfall. You know, the two waterfalls, and the, there's a thing about. Did you hear about? Um, they didn't have all the same type of a quality film in, in the camera, so some's low grain camera yeah, footage. I've noticed that with, with the, yeah, with the shots yeah. off the waterfall. It's like it looks like yeah. stock footage, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and that apparently that's it. They they filmed this. It was a really dangerous stunt, and it was filmed with low grade um, film. So they decided to keep that in. And it is. It's markedly different. It's like it's gone from four um, K even to standard definition, um, and it goes from that sort of technological thing to quite a a, a a basic kind of. It's just two people fighting, and how can you get one up on somebody? And you know, you then get into the the concept of. You know, you can't see me because he's got the mud over him and all the clay over him, um, which apparently that, in real life that does that. Was, that. was that Saul from Raiders of the Lost Ark? He can't see me. They're <laughs> digging in the wrong place. <laughs> They're digging in the wrong place. <laughs> I am the master the of the, in the wrong sea. Place. I am the ruler of the... <gasps> Bad dates. <laughs> Father of Indy. <laughs> you were named after a dog. Ha, 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 ha. Have you seen so that bit just before he goes off the waterfall? Have you seen how they shot him? You know when he's going down the bank and sliding down and yep. whoa, doing his total recall faces in the and, in the um, water slide. <laughs> yeah, but he's just on he's just on a sled, <laughs> and the camera's basically right in front of him, just coming down this slope. Because because where they were filming, they were they were filming in Mexico in um, the dry season. Because right. they were basically saying the conditions in, in the wet season are awful. So, but in the dry season, the vegetation, the lush vegetation you see, like a lot of it was fake that they put in there to make it denser. But the greenest places you're going to find are in, are in the valleys, close to you know the rivers and where the water's draining down. So most places they were, it was like that. Or everywhere, the, the, the makeup guy had to do stuff. Said he, he tried to set up his case everywhere, and like every time he opened it, everything would fall out because it was constantly just on a slope. Um. But that, so I can't remember what point is about slopes now. But anyway, Arnie's <laughs> coming down. Arnie comes down the slope to go off the waterfall, and they've got him on a sled with the, with the camera on on the front, and then it just they basically just put that shot and then chop it with the the low quality shot Adam's talking about, which still looked quite cool and an amazing shot yeah. when the predator comes out of the water through its time. Oh, brilliant. brilliant, brilliant cinematography. Yeah. Just look, it's just like wow, the way it's framed. 
What one of my favorite parts of the film actually is just before that, you know, when you see um Arnie come out of the water and he's sort of tired, tired out. And then in the background you just see the splash into the water so you know the predator's yeah, landed. Yeah, it's good that. And then it's like it just really piques your your kind of your your intrigue into you know the next stage of the film. But I, I quite like the fact when you when you look at all the characters and the way they interact, there's no kind of disquiet amongst them. There's no questioning of anything. They they're such a tight right. team that even though this guy's picking them off one by one, no one's unraveling. No one's saying we need to do things differently. You know, this is outrage. Right. They all trust in Dutch. They all trust yeah. in the order and the organization. And that, it's unusual in modern films because there's always like that kind of questioning authority and all that other yeah. stuff that's associated with it. Well, and it, it sort of like lends itself to the. Um... The, the actual act, actors themselves. So Dutch was the leader of that, you know, ragtag band of either mercenaries or if they're a proper, you know, recognised military unit. And Arnie, I believe, was leading on set as well. He just lead yep. everything, get up in the morning, like, come on, we go to the gym and take a bit, you know, and doing this and just just being a leader, being a strong leader, interacting with, you know, McTiernan and Joel Silver was a very hands-on producer. Um, yep. You know, Arnie larger than life, and just really just leading the actors. You know, he would also empower them as well. So, um, McT it was either McTiernan or Silver. I think it might be McTiernan. Said, you know, usually you get a call from one of their agents going, "Can you change this line to this line? I can say this instead because it's going to put me in a better light." Whereas yeah. Arnie, I believe, was saying it'll be quite good here if you know if if Dylan can say this or if. You know, if, if Bill Duke Mac says this line here, and he would just yep. he would try and he would raise them up as well and, and give them a bigger part, and it worked really well for Predator because it wasn't just the lead with loads of supporting. It was yeah, it was the big lead. It was Arnie larger than life, but he had this crew next to him, and some sort of fade away a little bit, but some of them feel larger than life as well, and they've all got you know, there's not a great deal of time for characterization and building that, but. They've all got their roles. They've all got their characters. You know, you I can hear like a crunching. <laughs> I think. I Dave, what is twiggle. wrong with you? Just press mute. Yeah. It's not that hard. Just press mute. Is my munching that loud? Yeah. Just, just wait four hours until we've finished recording. Then have your tea. So the um the the final fight scene between. The Predator and Arnie. I would say it's up there as a, a big action sequence. Um, I would say it's up there as one of those big action sequences, not because um, there's loads of explosions left, right, and center, and, and loads of incredible CGI, but just because it builds to basically two beings having a a, a fight, and to the death. You know, there's that. To the death, and also that you know that brilliant thing where uh, Arnie is, is like leaning against the rocks, going "Kill me, come here, kill me, kill, me. do it!" And, it, and, it, and he like and the and the predator said like ducks down, then he's like, "Oh, there's something sharp above my head. Oh, this doesn't seem right." And that little moment where it hit Arnie, you see on Arnie's face, and he goes, "Oh, okay, so he's not taking the bait. He's just going to kill me," <laughs> which is what I just walk, asked him to do. The predator's just going, "I know. I'll just walk around this trap to the other side and get, and get yeah. it." Oh, he's like, "Oh dear." It's it's classic that moment, and I, I quite like the fact as well that when he does get the better of him, and you know the the huge tree trunk like lands on the predator, and obviously it's completely disabled him. You then get kind of almost the respect, don't you, of the predator saying to him, you know, because he says, "You know, what the hell are you?" Nice and the predator shot, yeah. says, "No, yeah, yeah. you're like, what the hell are you? You know, how have you beaten me?" And the last laugh is supposed to be by the predator because he is going to kill everybody in you know this area, and including including the uh, Dutch, but he still manages to get away. So it's I think it's a really good ending to a film that like even at the end where you think Dutch has won, he might not have done, and then right at the end he he, he still has. You know, and he, he gets away on the chopper, and then you see Anna has actually escaped as well, which is quite a nice little ending. Yeah, it's 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 really really well done. It's it's a really good plot. The script is good. You know, the actors they haven't got to do like a Laurence Olivier performance. They've just got to play their part, and they all do it. They all do it. You know, 
Bill Jukes, he was in commando with Arnie, and that's one of the reasons why he was brought into this. Arnie had said, you know, cons- consider Bill. <laughs> What's he saying, commando? Um, I, I, I'm a Green Beret asshole or something like that. And then Arnie goes, I eat Green Berets for breakfast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's like Happy Gilbert, isn't it? It's like, uh, what was it? <laughs> when he says, I eat pieces of shit. Like you for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Come on, you I eat pieces, pieces of shit like you for breakfast. You eat, you eat shit for breakfast. No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it's it's just really well put together because you don't have to have you know a massive evocative performance. They're just going to do their parts and they do them all really well. Jesse Ventura, ex Navy Seal wrestler, you know he, he plays a governor. part really well. He, 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 yeah, governor. He's larger than life. He would, he would, he'd be heard to quip all the time on the set that he goes, you know, these guys they wouldn't last two minutes if we were really here in this situation. You know, yeah. I, I could, I couldn't go for the jungle with them. And then he goes, but here I can go for the jungle with them. Yeah, it's, and he was, he, you know, he, he appreciated working with them, but he was like, yeah, they, they ain't combat. They're, they're no way yeah. going to make it in combat. You know, Arnie did his thing. Great, he was just played his normal role. It's exactly the same. Commando, this total recall to a certain degree. Yeah. But you know he does it, and that's, that's what we wanted to see, and it fits. It's almost written for him. It just it, it fits it. Uh, yeah. Bill Duke is, is great, he, he, you know, and he, you know, uh, um, reacting to Blaine's death, you know, r- really cool yeah. as, as well. Um, Carl Weathers, spot on. He's the, you know, he's he's almost the the equal to, to Dutch, you know, and and they test that with the thing at the beginning, and. He is, he, and he plays a bit more of the pencil pusher. He's wearing his tie in the middle of the jungle, yeah. but he still like comes around. He's like, yeah, and he's built, and he, you know, he can give Arnie a run for his money with his size. And then you have got um, Poncho, um, forget the actor's name, um, the actual Vietnam vet. Yeah, and he was, he showed a bit of emotion in, in his role as well. And he's even gone to say, you know, I, I, I've experienced it before. So when Billy was reacting to something, he goes, "You'll see my, me." reacting to Billy reacting and he, he did it. And then you got Shane Black as Hawkins, you know, who's just the Joker with his stupid glasses and never missed out there. But also, well, also you've got, you've got, when you talk about Billy, I quite like, you know, when he stops on the tree and he tells everyone to go mm. and he's not really, he's not really buying them time, you know, because in some films, the person sticks around to buy people time. But yeah. What, what he's basically saying is I'm going to die on my own terms. I know I'm going to die. So yeah. I'm going to die on my own terms. And I quite like that. And you don't see him die, do you? You just hear this his scream yeah. when he's killed. But the, the, that um, was all, like the ultimate disservice to Billy because the scream is slightly more high pitched, bit more effeminate, mm-hmm. in pain, yeah. subservient. Where yeah. kind of that was his utter, you know, that's that, that's the utter slight to him. He's been killed, and that that shriek when it when it happens as well. Whereas you've also got Dylan that kind of is the the outlier he's the he's the person who they don't really trust but actually the moment where mac is undercover and he sort of says you know over here you know come 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 next to me and we're going to look i can see you know i see you you can see the uh you can see the predator there's a moment where i think there's a bit of trust where it's sort of yeah you there know, is he's there also, is. And that's, yeah. that's the other thing as well yeah he, he gains and, it and, because they want to they want to hurt him at the start they want to hurt dylan especially after the gorilla camp um yeah. And he does. They, they are working together, and, and I think Dylan's a bit. He almost self sacrifices to a certain degree. Where he's, isn't it? Him and Mac are staying behind when everyone else yep. is going on. It's like, yeah, I'll stay and, and sort this because he. It's almost like his redemption, so, yep. so to speak. Um, yeah, and, and the there you go. Just, we were talking- just, just running a big circle, like when you know when you used to play like manhunt or tick in school. I run a big circle. I'll get that. Yep. And as he does, like. Carl Weathers is shooting, and so the Predator just runs a big circle and somehow gets right yeah. up to him. It's like I can see where you're going, mate. You know, it's, that that was a bit. But then, and he has this, yeah, the proper like gruesome picked up and the the whole power uh, of, yeah. of the Predator, you know, showing picking him up and killing him. But the, but that there, there was another scene that was I think was um, edited for for television was the you know where his arm gets shot off. And it's yes. still firing the gun as it lands. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that that wasn't in the original terrestrial television version that I saw. So when I saw it like years later as the full version, I was like, oh, oh that's that's amazing. That that like actually adds to the film. Um, isn't it crazy when you've seen bits like that when you're a kid? 
you've seen it at some point, maybe in a theatrical release, you got all of a D, you know, video VHS or Betamax at the time, and then you've watched it on TV, and then you know more in your where your brain's more alert, so you, you know, you're nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, when you might have watched it when you were yeah. seven or eight, and then you think, did I dream that bit? Of a dream, because <laughs> yeah. I remember yeah. watching ET, and there was a bit, and then I watched it on the 25th anniversary release years ago. It was probably what's that? Like I don't know what even what year up to with ET, but it was a long time ago. And there was a bit, and it was like going, I always thought I dreamt that bit. Being crazy. based in the UK as well, we're still waiting to see the octopus and the Goonies that uh, Data oh, talks yeah. about. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's rubbish. Have That's you seen the US release? I saw. Um, I've got Goonies on. I might bought it from America, but it's got uh, on the um, at the. The um, deleted scenes. It's got the octopus, and so but at the pirate ship, there's an octopus in the water there, and I can't remember exactly yeah. what it does. But that's why. But yeah, for years it was like because the octopus was the scariest part. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. what mm -hmm. octopus? <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Why you, you? You've gone through something incredible and like really exciting. Why have you made up something yeah, unnecessary? Like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've got, I've got, I've got a fifty dollar bill. <laughs> Do you think you know Stranger Things is a is a nod to the eighties? Yeah, yeah. I thought I this point to make as well. Yeah, we've yeah. got Hawking. We've got Hawkins High School. Yeah, and we've got yeah. Hopper as a character. Jim Hopper, Jim yeah. Hopper as well. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, there's so many references in Stranger Things to different things, especially from the eighties. Oh, so, some yeah. of them are so so subtle. I love. Th th there was yeah. one where Wine Riot, we we owner Wine owner. <laughs> Winona. Yeah. We Winona. Is there an end to what's Winona. Winona. Vimarana. 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 A piranha. Marijuana. Marijuana. If you smoke marijuana, Lloyd. Marijuana rider. Is it Winona? Is it then like after the third letter? So Winona. Winona rider. And two of the kids uh, in the car, and they go through some trees yeah. and stuff. And it's Back to the Future. It's it's Marty. Yeah. First time he goes back and hits the twin pine to make it Lone Pine. And just and it, no yeah. reference to Back to the Future. Just little things like that. And um, yeah. there's one that no one notices, and it's brilliant. There's a Temple of Doom one where it's Indy and what was the name Willie, the um, the lead female in it, keep on coming out the rooms and turning around and going back in. When they're in Pancock Spielberg's Palace. wife. So this is six degrees of separation. This is where we move from the previous film that we rated, which was Ghostbusters, through to the film we're currently rating, which is Predator. So Dave, if I can ask you, how have you moved from Ghostbusters through to Predator? This is easy as well. You can do this in one step. In in a particularly laborious fashion, I must say, and I'm not going to. Well, I'm not going to stay. As is your I'm life. Dave to go against <laughs> trade, and all that you've seen. I need to go slowly and laboriously and unfunnily into something else. It may shock viewers, so put a guidance note up now. I just wanted to take a, a leisurely meander through 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 Hollywood. That was all it was. It's in no way indicative of my of my lack of knowledge when it comes to to movies. So okay. I started off with the movie Ghostbusters. Yes, as you, as you have to. Well Congratulations, <laughs> you've started where you should. Well done, Dave. Golf clap. Golf clap. I started off with William Atherton. William Atherton. He played. Walter Peck in Ghostbusters. Yes, yes. yes we, we know. We know this. Also, you may you may not know this. He also appeared in Die Hard. Yes, and you've probably got no. to know Die Hard 2, <laughs> the next thread. Alongside Bruce Willis, who also yeah. appeared in a movie called Pulp Fiction. Yeah. With Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Samuel yes. L. Jackson was in a movie called Avengers Endgame, which is a Marvel movie. He's been in lots of Marvel movies. And Chadwick Boseman was also in Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Now, Chadwick Boseman um, <laughs> appeared in Black Panther with Michael B. Jordan. Are you sure? Are you, you, are you, you sure? You want to read, uh, you want to read I, IMBD again? <laughs> and 
Michael B. Jordan was in a, a boxing movie called, called Creed. Rocky uh, with Sylvester Sloan. Sylvester <laughs> Sloan was in Rocky One with Carl Weathers and Carl Weathers in Predator. That yeah. was a, yeah, that was a lovely meander around all the houses there. So what was he, what was it, one of his first steps? I'm sure Adam Meek can bring a, a link from that. Um, we said we, we've always we've always been clear you can do it in as few or as many as you want. And this week I just wanted yeah. to take my time. Okay. You didn't know, did Shoot you? Me. Yeah. Yeah, this has been ten minutes this segment. <laughs> oh, go on, go on, Adam. Adam. No, I am gonna I, do you want me to do mine now? I'll I'll do mine now. Yeah, I've got two. So you can do yours and I'll uh, do mine. Okay, so <clears throat> I I had a, a, a few different ways, but I kept getting I kept gravitating towards Alien. Oh, for God's sake. And I, I'm saying that because I just don't want to go the same way as you. Right. So I thought... You can go your own is, way. Is it, does his initials... Is it a Y and a K for one of the actor's initials? Ah, no. Th that's the first way I went. And do you know what? Right. I, w I went with Yafut Koto and then I decided... Then you Lord went to or... the sequel. No, you went no. to Aliens. No, because I genuinely oh, I thought. All right. So for for those who are listening or watching that know us very well, Lloyd we and I think about go, things. Scorny Weaver, Alien. We're going to Yafa Koto, don't, don't, Alien. Don't don't the Running, the running Man, don't, Arnie. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and the Running yeah, Man, I didn't... Arnie, Arnie's obviously impressive. But neither was did <laughs> no. it because we knew we'd do it, so we discounted exactly. that one, and then exactly. we had a different way to go. So Adam, okay, okay, but I'm staying with Alien. Okay, so you'll like this, Lloyd. I went Tom with uh, yes, Tom. Cruise. No, no, no. I decided to go a bit out of left field. Let me, let me think. Let me think. <laughs> we make the segment longer. No, Elizabeth Shoe, Nicholas Cage. No, go on. No. Sorry, you'll like this. You will like this because I, I was thinking if I get past a. Uh, Alien. Is there any way I can get to 1980s comedies? I don't so, think there is, but the there way, is a way. You'll like mine. Me and you, you, you you'll like mine, Adam, when I do it. Okay. You'll do a line. We'll both say a line together. I'll tell the viewers <laughs> now, when I do mine, we'll say a movie line together. Okay. Once I say the last, no, once I say the last link and I go and I give you a thumbs up, then we say the line together. Okay. 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 Like, sorry. Can I go first? Yeah. So Ghostbusters. Stars Sigourney Weaver. Mm -hmm. Sigourney Weaver is in Alien. Yeah. Alien also stars Tom Skerritt. Yeah. Tom Skerritt is in Poison Ivy with Ooh. Drew Barrymore. Yes. And you, no. I think you can, you can all guess where I'm going with this. Drew Barrymore is in The Wedding Singer with Adam Sandler. Who is in Happy Gilmore with Carl Weathers? Mm. Carl Weathers Carl is in Predator. It's a Harley. <laughs> Carl in the hips. Well, Sigourney Weaver's a link in, isn't it? Isn't she yep. from um, Ghostbusters? So my meh on, I went Sigourney Weaver, still with the link, but I've got a double link here. So to Aliens, and you've got Alien yep. versus Predator, Aliens versus Predator. And then we've got. Um, Game over, man. Game over, Bill man. Paxton. Bill Paxton. Oh, you can't go He's straight also, to True Lies. No, no, no. Sideways. This isn't Ooh. going anywhere. Sideways. Predator 2. Okay. Yeah. Di yeah. Gary Boozy. Are you going for Gary Boozy on it? No. You know. Danny Bill Glover. Paxton. Bill Paxton was in Predator 2. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to jump ahead. No, no. I'm not going that way, though. I'm coming oh. back. I'm just going... Okay. There's a segue. So Bill Paxton, Predator 2, because it's Predator. Bill yeah. Paxton, True Lies, Arnie, and obviously Predator. And now we can do that line. And those, those idiots. Those idiots. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. And that's a wrap.